If you have a billion dollars, what are you going to do? Well, to me, I can travel around the world twice, like the world, so in circle, twice. And then you still have money lip over. So you can go to the beach, you can go party, you can do whatever uh, you want to do. And you still have money lip over. Other people will do this. Listen. Ever uttered by all humans who have ever lived. That doesn't include flatulence, oh. though. <laughs> so you want to get a sense of the scale of these numbers. I'm just putting it in context here. Quintillion. So that's a one with 18 zeros. Okay. That's about the number of grains of sand on an average beach. Oh, just one beach. Wow. Just one beach. Next time you go to a beach, just pick up yeah. a handful of sand and just look at it. The sand is deep and it goes into the water a bit and it comes out and it's wide. So you do the volumes, figure that out. So that's how you get a quintillion grains of sand on an average beach. Let's go now a thousand times bigger than a quintillion. So quintillion was 10 to the 18th power, one with 18 zeros. Now we're talking about one with 21 zeros. That has a name. Next up, sextillion. That is the estimated number of stars in the universe. But let's keep going. I'm not done with you. 10 to the 23rd power. You met that number in your chemistry class in high school. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. That's a mole in chemistry. And a mole is how many particles of a substance occupy a specified mass of that substance. And so there are vessels that contain moles of things, 10 to the 23rd molecules. So here you go. Do you realize there are more molecules of water in a glass of water than there are glasses of water in all the world's oceans? There are more molecules of water in a glass of water than there are glasses of water in the entire volume of water in the world. Correct. Okay. Oh. You know what? I'm gonna drink to that. Not only that, there are more molecules of air in a single breath of air than there are breaths of air in all the world's atmosphere. That's not just a fun fact. What this means is when I drink a glass of water and then it comes out of me seven different ways, I can right. sweat it, sweat, I can spit it, urine, pee, all, right. all of this. It goes back into the environment. Okay, this there, has gotten really disgusting. In the glass of water you drink, there is water molecules that pass through the kidneys of Jesus. There are air molecules that were breathed by Genghis Khan. And that way we are deeply connected in the fluids we consume and in the air we breathe. So working up from the mole, we get to 10 to the 81st power. If you multiply all the stars times all the molecules and particles they're made of, you get 10 to the 81 power, which is the sum of all particles that comprise the observable universe. Now you can ask, why would anyone need a number bigger than this? <laughs> I was gonna say, there's nothing else beyond that. What right is there to account beyond that? Okay, but that doesn't stop mathematicians. There's a number, a one with a hundred zeros, that would be 10 to the hundredth power. That's called a Google. The company took that word, messed up the spelling of it, and they became the first time most people even ever heard the pronunciation of such a thing. There's a number that dwarfs the Google. That's 10 to the Google power. And is that called a Yahoo? <laughs> no. It's a one with a Google zeros, and that's called a Googleplex. Oh, sweet. If a Googleplex has a Google zeros in it, there are not enough particles in the universe upon which you would write the zeros just to express that number. If you put a zero on every particle in the universe, you, you the, run you, out of room to write run, the Googleplex. Correct. That's insane. That's insane. It's completely insane. It's the Googleplex. It's a big number. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. So we went through all this.